started. So um, talk is, but you all knew, how to sail through the Bermuda Triangle of web designer hell to get to WordPress Pro. And um, I'm going to skip about me, but, well, no, I won't. So <laughs> I'm a psychologist and a serial entrepreneur. And I had a software company um, where I, we did medical records for psychiatric hospitals. And after I sold that, ho that company, I never wanted to go back to being a psycholog psychologist again, and I sold that. And then I didn't know what I was going to do. I knew I had to work, but I didn't know what I was going to do next until I was sitting in the coffee shop helping people with their websites because I had made my own and so forth and so on. It was during the recession when everybody was getting fired from Turner Broadcasting and AGC, and I would be helping them figure out what they wanted to do for their business, and other people would hear me, and they'd say, can I have your card? I'm like, I don't have a card. And they'd say, well, I don't care. I want to work with you. I said, I don't have a business. Then I thought, well, maybe I do have a business. Famous last words. Um, today, I have a five-person agency, and I love my work, and it keeps getting better all the time. And so one of the things I wanted to talk about was this thing that happened over the last couple of years. I was doing these talks on user experience in WordCamps and usually in a ballroom. And we would teach homepage user experience um, things. What, what do you need to do on your homepage to make it effective? And then I'd take um, people's website URLs and we'd critique them live in the session. And I was really shocked, actually, that there were so many people struggling to make websites that would be effective. I mean, we'd put a website up there, and I'd be like, oh, who can tell what this company does? I mean, you know, when you're used to seeing your own website or websites you're building for others, you don't really, you get, you know, you're not seeing them with fresh eyes. So the whole ballroom would go, oh, we can't tell. And that would happen over and over again. And then afterwards, I'd have a line out the door in the happiness room wanting to talk about their websites. And I remember being in that situation where I, after, you know, I built my first website and I thought it was really great, um, I didn't know, then it, then it wasn't so easy after that. That was easy. And so that's what this talk is going to be about. So um, how many current or aspiring WordPress web designers or developers are out in the audience. Yay, you're my people. And is your goal to price, close, build, and deliver effective websites for satisfied clients? Yeah, it's a good goal. Um, you know, that's not really very easy to do for a lot of people are not being able to do that. So does this sound like you? Your website project starts to spiral out of control, costing you time and money but you don't know how to stop it from happening again, keep falling into the same track. I know that's happened to me. How about this one? You want to confidently build client websites without spinning your wheels and doubting your abilities? What about this one? You've been going to meetups and attending WordCamps, maybe even studied web design, learned HTML, CSS, but you're not making progress as a freelancer that you would have thought you would make, and it's still, you're not making the money, you're spending too much time, it's not working out for you quite like you thought it would. So what's going on? Well, here, when I would come away from those uh, word camps and I had the, the line out the door, I was like, oh, there's so many people, they need so much, and how, you know, how did this, how do you get from where they are to where they need to be? And I started thinking about it. I started thinking about my own journey. And um, there's this learning model called conscious competency where at stage one is you're unconsciously incompetent. And you're making a website, you made a few, and you think they're great. They might even be pretty good. Um, when I, my first website was for a friend of mine, I finally said, okay, I'll take your money. And she was a music producer, and she had just done a great 
photo shoot with all of her people. And she was working with like um, CeeLo and India Ari and all these engineers. And so I had great material to work with with this website together. I thought it was so good that I should send it into the WordPress showcase. <laughs> now that is the prime definition of unconscious incompetence. Then somebody said, Judy, those people that are on the showcase, they've, though, here's the criteria for getting on the showcase. I'm like, oh, okay. So in that regard, unconscious incompetence is where you don't, um, unconscious incompetence is where you don't know what you don't know. You like web design, you think it'll be a great, um, a great uh, new career for yourself. You've made a website or two, but you have no way to accurately judge the quality of what you're doing and how far you are from doing good work. And so then what happens is that you get to stage two. And this happens pretty quickly, where you go, whoa. And this is where you're staying up till three in the morning. You're um, making about $3 an hour. And uh, you're conscious of your incompetence. And you're discouraged because it makes you anxious. Because whenever you get a new client, you're like, how am I going to make this work? What am I going to do? What theme am I going to do? Blah, 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 blah. You wish you had a systematic process for learning a way and a way to get feedback when, from experts when you need it. So I was a little lucky back in the day because I had an event space. And so there was a coffee shop across town that was doing a Word, WordPress meetup. I'd come back from that really disappointed every month because you couldn't hear anybody talk. It was like, oh, here are the gods of WordPress. And I can't even ask them a question because it's too noisy in this place. Then I thought, I thought, well, maybe they need help. And so I asked, and they said, yes, they'd love to have the meetups in my place. So we'd have people, 60 people at a time. We'd, uh, at, I have an event space, and so they, we do it there. And the good thing about that is I got to then, I had to then, also help find the, the people to do the talks. And I, looking back on it, what I did to get through that next stage is I curated my own education. I'd find people to talk on topics that I needed to know, and I'd be around them. And so, you know, I got that, I th thought back, it was still a miserable time that conscious Incompetence is difficult, but that's how I did it. And not everybody has that ability to do it, although it is a good idea. <laughs> um, so the next stage is unconscious competence. That's where you're doing it just effortlessly. You don't even realize, you forget how hard it was. Um, and you're doing, and this, this pertains to anything you're learning. So you can imagine if you were learning violin, you'd go through this same stage. But when you got down to stage two, you'd get yourself a teacher, you'd take, you know, there'd be a curriculum, you'd study this, and you'd get, get along. But um, it doesn't work that way. Oh, well, we did that. Um, but it doesn't work that way there's not really a curriculum. If you go to school for web design, you learn CSS and HTML and JavaScript and this. You get out of school, you can't be a freelancer because that isn't even something that you do unless you, I mean, most people want a WordPress site. They don't want you to build a site from scratch. And we've seen a lot of people come. We have um, General Assembly in Atlanta, and a lot of people go to those courses and then show up in the meetup groups. Thank God they got there because they're like, they don't know what to do to, to build a website for anyone. So how do you get from, how do you get from that conscious incompetence to what I call pro-confidence? And the pro-confidence is not back here where you are such a high level working at a such high level that you don't even remember what it was like, but it's in between. You know, you're, you're on your way. And the definition of that pro-confidence is that, you, um, that you, know, you know your stuff. Um, 
you know what you're doing. It takes some effort. It's not effortless, but you know what you're doing, and you're not afraid to take bigger and bigger projects because you know that you can get them done. You know that you can take care of things, and it just feels like you're on your way to having a great career because you keep getting better clients. You're not, you're managing the scope. You're doing things right. So then you ask yourself, well, okay, how do you get from two to pro, pro level of con competency? And that's what I call the Bermuda Triangle because so many people get caught there. And I would see so many people that had started out with me that were in work going, coming to meetups who were still flailing around in that, the choppy waters of that, that place and not being able to get out. I thought, why, what can they do? What, what's going on here? And what I realized from, from talking to people and really looking at this is that there's actually uh, seven core competencies. There are probably more, but there's at least seven core competencies to becoming a good WordPress designer slash developer because it could be either one. But if you're going to be a freelancer and doing websites for people, you need to have a foundation in all of these different areas. And um, I had been blogging for, I have nine years so far, been blogging every Wednesday. And I took on my blog post and I did a sort into categories and it kind of came out like this. And I'm like, oh. So then I called it the seven core competency framework. Um, so just going over those, and what I'm going to do here is go over the seven core competencies, and then I'm going to give you a couple of examples of things that are piv you know, really important, pivotal things that if you can do those things, you know, you'll, you'll have a, a foot up if you don't make those mistakes or whatever. And so, um, so the seven core competencies are Obviously, you have to know something about managing client business, managing your clients and business skills. You have to have some user experience and usability. I say one of the tricks, really, of, um, of impressing your clients is just do some reading all the time on some, follow some of the usability blogs. And then when, they, when people come in, you can talk about, oh yeah, the research shows blah, 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 that, you know, that people will scroll as long as they don't hit the bottom and they know something if they're motivated and they know there's more to come. You throw out some of those things that I think are fascinating and the clients are like, whoa, she, they, she really knows what she's talking about. So, I mean, that's an example of something in that area that you have to be armed with the latest data because how many people have let a client talk them into some weird thing that they should never have let the client talk them into doing that end up taking way too much time and aren't even in their best interest. Yeah, we all have. Um, design skills. It's, it's amazing how, I, so it's amazing how if, if you're a designer, you think everybody can tell the difference between something that looks good and looks bad. I'm here to tell you that that's not true. I've got a couple of developers in a course, I'll tell you more about my course later, but in my course right now that I haven't had the developers in it, and they are really constitutionally incapable of knowing this automatically. And um, so, you know, we've had to really go over rules like, you know, all these things that I haven't had to teach designers, you know, white space and, and proximity and how you have to line things up and how actually the hex code colors that you're using, your brand colors, you actually have to look up the codes and use them consistently. I mean, and if you do all of these little rules, your site's going to look better, even if you don't understand, like, initially what makes a good design. Um, and it, it's really interesting to to kind of see uh, someone who doesn't have that and what they need to be able to even say, oh, this, was, this is a good site and this one isn't a very high quality. Um, online marketing. You need to know how to help your clients 
with um, email newsletters, with sales funnels, with sales page pages. You need to know what makes an effective website. Um, and you need to probably be doing, not probably, you need to be doing those things yourself. Um, WordPress skills, that's, you know, that's just one of the competency areas. But um, WordPress skills are important, whether you're a technician, designer, developer, you know, all of those, those um, you know, you hear, I think WPMU talks about, what do they call people, uh, I can't remember, but it's kind of derogatory, who aren't developers who are building WordPress sites. Implementers. I mean, implementers? Come on. You know, it takes a lot more to make an effective website. Somebody that's just an implementer uh, maybe could put a WordPress site up, but they certainly can't build an effective website. Um, technical skills, you know, all of the technical skills. I can't tell you how many times clients have come to me and they've said, um, I just lost all my SEO with the last person that I used because they didn't redirect their 30, you know, did, didn't do 301 redirects from my old HTML site to the WordPress site they built. And if that site was an e-commerce site, that is a real big problem. I mean, if it's just some dog training site and they weren't getting any business anyway, but, you know, that's, anyway, you should know those things. A lot of people don't have the depth in knowing those things. So I wanted just to give you a couple of core, a couple of the areas that, a couple of things that I found in some of these areas that can make a big difference in your confidence and competence of, towards being a WordPress pro. And these are just some examples from, that I've come up with based on uh, having looked into this and then created a curriculum. So after being worried about all these people that I couldn't help individually, I decided to make a course. And I can't, when I was a kind of kid or, you know, teenager, that in home ec, I couldn't make an apron. I had to make like a dress or I couldn't just make a cake, I had to make baked Alaska. You know, it's like, I can't just do it small. So I decided I would make a course that covered all of these competency areas. And I thought after I had done these, you know, changed, put my blog posts in all these categories, I actually did a six, five month pilot with six people who paid $2,500 a piece to be in the pilot to get this information over the six, five or six months and then have coaching with me during the week. And so it went really well. And one of the, one of the things I have people do is do their own website first. How many of you have a website your own that you really think does a good job for you to bring in clients? Yeah, a few. And that is, that is the common thing that not very many people put themselves first. And I'm telling you, if you want to get more money for your sites, say you're even really good, you're not going to unless you can show who you are and what you do. I like to tell people that if you can sell in person, then we have to bottle that and we have to put it on the website. And so you have to do that for yourself, which is one of the hardest things to do, is do your own website. But in my course, that's what the main deliverable is. First, learn all these things by doing it to, with your own website. So you walk out of here with a great website. So um, client and business management, I'm gonna go over the pricing websites like a pro. So you have to have your own great website and you have to know who your people are, who your clients are. You have to be confident enough to um, about what you do and you have to have a system to from the first time the person calls and so you have to do all this because and you have to have some way of dealing with the price because you know overpricing is going to alienate people underpricing will just uh, you're going to lose the money on the job so you have to be able to not go into panic mode when you think about pricing a website. 
So I created a five-step process, and it starts with a free, I'm going to go over it tomorrow in more detail, a short phone call, free phone call. Call me. Let's talk about it. And that phone call is solely to qualify whether this is a good lead. And if it is, that 10 minutes can talk to go to 15 or 20 minutes if I'm having a good conversation and connecting because the whole goal of that phone call, once you've qualified them, is to set up a paid consultation. And I have them come to my office. I rarely ever, unless it's a huge client, go to their office. I have them come to me. And so they pay $150, it's not much. And I call it a consultation. And I say, to the first step of working with me is to set up that consultation. We go over what you're doing, your business. Your, you know, It's not just me telling them what I do. It's finding out what they do, what they need, and what's going on for them, giving them that user experience data and different things that can help them. So if they don't work with me, they can take that information and go to anybody. They'll, they'll be better off. So during that paid consultation, when you're really diving into their business, instead of saying, oh, OK, so what's your business? Yeah, do you, did you bring three websites that you like? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can make you one like this. <laughs> you know, you know people that do that, right? So, um, so, so if you're getting into their business and you're really, uh, you know, they see that you're interested. And a lot of people feel like they don't have business experience. So how can they really understand or talk about this person's business? But it's just a matter of being interested and in inquiring about, well, what things are profitable? You've got 750 items on the store. Are all of them profitable? Well, I don't know. You know, well, let's look. You know. Stuff like that. Just diving into the things and to make them think, to make them know that you care about their business and have some idea about how you need to do their website to make it you know, effective for them. Not like anybody else's website, but for them. And then, if you do that well, they're going to go, well, well, how much will this cost? And then that's when everybody goes, oh, well, I'm, I should have gone out and looked at the car in the driveway or, you know, what, I wonder how much they can afford and all of that. Well, so in order for, for me to teach the client, my, my course, people, my course, how to price websites, I made this thing that I'm going to show tomorrow called the Website Cost Estimator. And the Website Cost Estimator, um, it's, um, I did it in Gravity Forms. And you go through, it's a series of maybe 30 questions. I don't know how many, because some of them, it's conditional logic. So if they need a store, then it goes into asking them all, all the online shopping stuff. But one of the first questions is, what kind of client are you going to be? You have champagne taste, and you want it like you want it? 2,000 extra. We'll put, it comes up 2,000. You know, if you just, it, it first ask whether it's a refresh or a new website or, you know, whatever, and that gives a certain amount as a baseline. Then the champagne taste, the reserved, are you going to make me pull it out of you? That's 500 extra. Are you going to be really easy to work with and uh, collaborative and we're going to have a great time? And that's zero extra. But they laugh and they know it's true. So I've had people go through it, go through that, and maybe they worked for a nonprofit. They were the head of a nonprofit, and they say, well, yeah, I have champagne taste, but you know, I'm going to be like, really easy to work with. And by the time we get to the bottom, she says, you can tell she's been stewing about it. Could you go back to that champagne taste question? And you need to check yes. <laughs> You know, but what a great thing that you get that out of the way right up front so you can talk about it. Remember you said you didn't have champagne taste? We're into champagne taste territory. And so you either need to go back, you know, scale back the, how many times we revise this little thing or whatever you're asking for, that, or we've got to charge more. And they, they know it then, you know? Um, so you go through, how many forms do you want? One form? That's no extra. Do you want three forms? Then that's extra, and it gives a price. Content, everything. And it's so much fun, because they get to say, oh, hmm, 
well, I thought I wanted this, but I know I don't have the money for an e-commerce store right now, so I guess we'll just put some photos you know, on and do the e-commerce and you know, website 2.0 or something. They get to see it's not just something you can pull out of the sky. It takes hours, it takes work. And so you get to the, the it's adding these things up as you go along, and you get to the, the price, and they feel like they have collaborated in coming up with their own price. And so most of the time when I do it, somebody goes, oh, okay. And if it's too much, then we go back and we, take, we, we adjust instead of just coming down off the price, we say, okay, what don't you need? Or what can we, how can we get this down? You maybe give up your champagne taste or whatever. And so by the time they walk out of the office, all I have to do is go to Proposify, go to my proposal template, put all this stuff in there, and send it to them, and they've already agreed. And so it is so seamless. And if you want, uh, I, if you're, whether you're coming to my talk tomorrow, I think it's 66866. If you text 66866, you can put your email in, and I'll send you the stuff for the paper version of the pricing websites like Pro. And so you'll also get on my mailing list. So 66866. Uh huh. No, Proposify is a software for, as a service. It's, it's um, really easy to use. And once you put your, make a few templates for various types of, of um, projects, you really just have to go in and customize the front letter and, you know, customize, you know, put, just tweak it. And so I can do a proposal so fast having put a little time into it on getting those, getting my own templates set up. So, um, so, I mean, those are the kinds of things, you know, why take, you should send your proposal right away. And Proposify says, you know, the faster you send them a proposal, the faster you, you know, if you send them a proposal right away, I can't remember the statistics, but the longer you wait, the less chance you have of, of getting that, um, contract signed. So that's just an example. The pricing website's like a pro of what can make a huge difference in the area of business. Did you say it was 66866? 66866. Six, six, six. Does that work? There are two words. I think it's WordPress Mastery or WordPress Pro. WordPress Pro. You know, wouldn't you think I would remember this? Uh, t tell me if that works. The what? WordPress Pro. WordPress Pro. And then you'll get the you'll get the whole dog and pony show about how to do these these meetings and the paper version and a PDF version of the questions that I've asked. And then the, you can buy the the um, the automated version for $47 later if you want to, but, um, but it's just great to, to have them feel like they understand where the price is coming from because most people have no idea and they do really think you're pulling it out of the air. And so given you can pull something out of the air, they think, well, why can't it be like cheaper? So, um, so, so that's a website co cost estimator. So another, um, this is a, a slide about the, how the paper version works. And there's a Word version and a PDF, so you can actually, if you want to use it with your own clients, you can adjust the, the, the items and the pricing, and you can actually make it into a Gravity Forms yourself or pay $47 for us to do it. Um, so the next thing is an example of one of the things that has made a huge difference in our um, our work with making effective websites. Um, you know, people are always talking about telling the story, you know, on the home page. A lot of people get that confused. They think it's their story, their website, their business story. 
And it's like, no, 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 no. It's your clients. It's, your, it's telling the story of how you're going to help your clients reach their goals. And so, um, so there's a, I was already doing this, but Donald Miller, who knows Donald Miller and StoryBrand? Yeah, if you don't, go to, go to his site. He's a master marketer, for one thing, but the StoryBrand um, framework is really great because, you know, I, it translates well to ha have your clients help you get the information that you need to be able to help them create a, an effective website. How are we doing on time? I wish we had a... Okay, so the story brand, you have a character. It's not you, it's your client. They have a problem, they need something. That's hopefully what you have to sell or to provide. But if they just needed something and could go out and get it, it wouldn't be very interesting, would it? I mean, they you wouldn't need you, they'd just go get it. They wouldn't be hunting for, for the, something has happened. They have a problem that they haven't gotten it. And in web design, it's often things with our clients is they've worked with a freelancer who doesn't call them back, doesn't give them what they, you know, doesn't ever keep their appointments, um, or they've worked with an agency that they get punted off because they're smaller, punted off to the interns. You know, they have some sort of problem. So we, our little niche is for people that want a small agency. They don't want to just work with a one-person person or have to go get your branding and your content and all of these things from other places and bring it back to the developer. They want a one-stop shop. So when they come to our website, they find a one-stop shop. So they have, so knowing what the problems are, then and the external problems, internal problems, even philosophical problems. If you know that whatever you're selling, somebody feels like maybe they don't deserve it, or they shouldn't spend so much, or they should do it themselves, then you can address those objections in your copy. Not like, even kind of just, um, not, you don't have to like say that you're doing that, but you know that you're doing that by the kinds of information that you're giving them. So the more you can identify the, the client and the problems they're having and what, what's interfering with them getting this whatever they want, then you can go to the next step, you're the guide. And so you need to present yourself as having the answer to the problem and you need to present yourself or your business or your company as empathetic with what's going on with them and as an expert. And then the next thing, and all of these things are things that are going on the home page, are helping in terms of, of text and images and all sorts of things, building that story on the front page. So then, so many people's websites don't have any call to action or don't really tell them how what is the process of working with you? And so um, you give them a plan right on the front page. And it could be, if this is a creek, the plan might be to get across the creek. I'm gonna step one foot on this side of the creek. You see that rock? Put the other foot and then the other. You don't have to have an elaborate plan because you wanna keep it really simple. But just seeing a little plan, you know, first make a short phone call, second, set up consultation, third, you know, period. And then that subliminally walks them through being able to see themselves actually calling you. Um, calls to action. Primary, call me, set up an appointment, whatever it is. Secondary, set up a way for them to sign up for your newsletter so that you don't lose them and you can nurture them along. There's you can, there's also portraying what success looks like and what failure looks like. So on the top hero image, um, one of my friends, Cliff Seal, uses this example, and I can't stop thinking about it. Like, he saw a toenail fungus billboard, and it had a picture of a foot with a toenail fungus on it. Well, I was Googling, because we were doing a, a, a presentation together, toenail fungus, you never want to do that. 
It is really awful. But you wouldn't want to put the picture of the nasty foot. You would want to put the picture of a beautifully manicured foot at the beach or whatever. And so you want to show them what success looks like. And just a tiny bit about failure. Like in the toenail fungus, you wouldn't have a photo of it, but you would like say, you know, well, you don't want da 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 to happen. And, um, and so it gives you a little framework. So I'm going to show you really quickly in this website, The Virtual Divorce, how, how some of those things played out here. Well, in a, she does a divorce, online divorces in California. And um, she's an attorney. And um, so what do you put on the top? Not a fighting couple, not a happy person, one sex or another. So we wanted to introduce the fact that her message, interested in a fast, easy, affordable divorce. Not, we do this, we do that. Uh -uh. Talk directly to them. Are you interested in a fast, easy, affordable divorce? We got those words right from the clients. That's what they were interested in. And so we use their words. And um, primary call to action, we supplemented making sure that they knew it was just in California. The empathy message, ending a marriage is hard. The divorce process shouldn't make it worse. Now online divorce in California. Then there's a more empathy where she's saying some divorcing couples feel so bitter and betrayed that they're not able to or willing to play fair, blah, 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 ends up being expensive, blah, blah, blah. That's the taste of the negative. On the other hand, some couples, you know, who are respectful of each other, blah, 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 can end up saving you money, making a better outcome with your kids, and she's painting the positive story. Then the, the expertise, hi, it's just her, so don't say we, it's just a her. And people, if you're, a, if you're just a one-person shop or your client is, go with that as a strength because they're going to know you're not a we if they're working with you. So she says, I'm an attorney that provides online divorces in California, blah, 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 blah. And there's a picture of her. So that's a trust builder. There's a, another call to action up in the, the um, header. Here's some empathy statements in terms of the what clients say. You can look at this. It's called the virtualdivorce.com, I think. Um, and so the testimonials, uh, she has benefits of a virtual divorce. She kind of got carried away, and they, they're not even, which bothers me, but you can't, once you give it to them, you know. Um, another primary call to action, oh, here's her getting started. A simple three-step plan. Schedule a 15-minute call. Choose a divorce package for you. Schedule a, um, a consultation ses session. So, um, and then more empathy, not quite ready for a divorce. How about some divorce co coaching? And so you can see how going through that exercise of the brand story helps us figure out what's on the page. Well, for, for most small companies, we charge $1,500 just to help them with the brand story and to, to make their home page, you know, better than normal. And so that's another thing. They're like, oh, nobody else has said that they could do that. I want a, I want a website that really does that for me. So, you know, that's another example in that area of, um, of uh, how you can, in the area of content, really help elevate your business and feel more confident yourself. All of my students who have started using this with their clients, instead of like not having a language to talk about how you're going to get started, you can take that, that little form and go through that and give them homework and go over it and it helps you. It gives, it, it's an organizing tool that helps you figure out what you're going to do with them on their home page. And I feel like once you've got that home page nailed, you're home free. You know, you've got the design, you've got content, the other pages fall into place. So the final one I'm going to go over is the biggest mistake of broke web designers is hopping around from theme to theme. 
Um, how many people, when they were new, started like every time you got a new website, you'd f look for the right theme? I mean, these days with theme builders and stuff, that isn't as um, common as it was when I first started out because you'd just look for the perfect theme that had everything how you wanted it. And the problem with that is you were learning a different theme every time. You didn't know whether, I call it the bad boyfriend um, theme selection, because you think, oh, I found the perfect theme. Oh my God, it's perfect for this, it's great, it's gonna be great. You do it, you spend all this time with it, you got it just right, and there's some fatal flaw. It's an alcoholic. Um, <laughs> It, the theme developers don't, aren't supporting it, or it's getting supported too many times and it's, it's got too many updates, or God knows it's slow as a dog and nobody's telling you what to do about it. So find a theme framework that you can use. Learn how to just make it do whatever you want. Because our clients say, well, do you start with a theme? I said, everybody starts with a theme because WordPress doesn't work without a theme. But we start with a bare theme and we build it like we start and do Beaver Builder, or you know, if the client's already working with something, we'll use theirs, but you know, their theme builder, but we'll, we'll build it from scratch based on how it needs to be built. So don't go swapping around all over the place. And you go to, the problem with going to meetups and work camps and stuff is you hear so many different people say so many different things. It's like the shiny object. Oh, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should, oh, somebody really loves Divi. Oh, but they, somebody else said that, you know, it can make your head spin, like shh. So um, that's a huge thing. If you can do that, it's a little awkward at first, but it's part of professional development. And if you are a non-designer, you don't have any design skills, don't, do, don't start working with a theme builder. I mean, because you'll make a huge mess. So in that case, start with Studio Press Child Themes. And so my de developers that I'm working with, I said, said start with a theme developer process, uh, I mean, a Studio Press theme. So, you know, one of them picked this pretty, um, pretty bold, uh, child theme, I think it's called Makers Pro, and he puts his stuff in. I said, okay, you're going to show us your website today? He shows us this website. I'm like, I thought you were going to use Makers Pro, and it has big font and, you know, not minimal pictures, but it designs a lot with the font, and he said, I, I did. I said, well, what's this blue font, this small blue font here is a headline. He had done, he had changed all the headlines. He had changed it all, and so I'm like, you know, we had to have the conversation of what makes a design. I said, this, th what makes this theme look good is the fact that this big headline repeats, you know, different places on the page. And when you just change that to this, it, you know, it's really interesting. So, but, so now they're back to like sticking with the understanding what made it a theme that they liked and trying to fit the content into that. And if they needed a new widget area, they're developers. They can make a new widget area. But, um, you know, so there are tricks, depending on what your strengths and weaknesses are, that allow you to be more confident and competent. And it's been really wonderful working with the students that have gone through my course because uh, the other, the other um, deliverable is they have to apply and speak at a WordCamp. And some of them, have done that. I mean, you don't have to do that, but quite a few of them got their websites finished and sp have spoken at even more than one WordCamp now. And you should have seen, you know, they were just like really elevated to have that experience that, that they could be recognized for what they knew and what they did and that they had a great website. So those are the, I think I have some takeaways here. Um, yeah, so study each of these competency areas. Somebody today said you should always be learning. So, you know, I'm a big reader, so I do read like for 30, 40 minutes every morning um, and dive into things on a, on a bigger basis regularly. That's what you really have to do. Get involved and help run a meetup so you have some, some leeway in what you need to know. Join my newsletter, which if you signed up for uh, WordPress Pro, all one word, you'll get on it. Work with a mentor. 
you know, if you don't know your sites are terrible, who's going to tell you? You know, it's really helpful to have someone who gently tells you, hmm, maybe you should stick with the studio press theme um, and, and why. Um, so, you know, getting feedback from people in the, in, in the field who you trust, the same thing with a mentor, but if you have a group of people, because you can't get better in a vacuum. You just won't because you don't know what you don't know. And you could think that your website belonged in the WordPress um, showcase. And thank goodness I had a friend tell me <laughs> that that wasn't the case. And um, you know, you can sign up for a course. You know, there's my course goes into, it has four months now of online courses with 10 modules, probably five to 10 lessons a module with a, a video, a transcript, an assignment, and a quiz. And then we do coaching every week. We'll be doing another one in um, October. But there's other ones. If you're, you know, there's other people doing things. Um, Troy Dean's uh, WP Elevation, you can talk to Melanie about that. Um, it just depends on what kinds of, how much hand holding you'd like. And, um, but I don't know very many courses that, that give you a foundation in what you, in all of the areas you don't know that you needed to have. And then once you have that foundation, then you know where you're going. So once you have that theme that you're working on and getting to be a, a pro in it, you know, oh, I've just got to keep studying this. But if you don't know which theme and you're going through that every week, it's not going to work out for you. So basically, that's how to get out of the WordPress, uh, the Bermuda Triangle, where you're spinning your wheels and so forth. Um, there are tricks of the trade for each of those, many more, for many in each one of those competency areas that can rocket, I mean, rocket your success just by knowing, you know, to use that story brand framework or to have a way of pricing the websites. And you start to accumulate those systems and techniques, and all of a sudden, your websites are getting much better. You're able to double your prices. You double your prices again. You know, it just works. So thank you. Any questions? It's a psychological, it's a psychological thing. I, and I have so many, I know so many people that spend their entire week, so many freelancers that spend their whole week going to this person's office or that person's office and, and laying out their whole dog and pony show and not really coming away with knowing whether it landed or it didn't land and because that person doesn't have any skin in the game. So you need to do something, the charging them for the, appointment and not making it so easy you know you just don't want to make it easy for them you want to set up some little hurdles that they end up knowing it's do you know that like if you do something for someone you think they would like you more the research shows if they do something for you they like you more isn't that odd and so you're asking them to come to your office and to pay and if you don't have an office, then I don't know. You can get an office, get a space. It, it helps to have, have people think you're more than, you know, working out of your bedroom. Yeah. So to piggyback on that, with like a lot of uh, geographically spread out clients, do you feel like that would work on the phone? I do. Do you do like a video chat? I do Zoom. Yeah. Okay. How many? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, if it's if it's a geographically um, if it's a geographic issue, then I do the meetings on Zoom, and I just again charge for the consultation, and then we do the whole thing on Zoom, and it works just fine. 
But it, it works better if you, you know, better in person because you can get that, you know, that personal relationship. But Zoom is pretty darn good. You get to see their reaction, mm -hmm. their facial. Yeah, and even doing the, the website cost us estimator over the phone, it works. It's, I've done that too. Yeah. Other questions? Yes. When you talk about this, I was intrigued by this website cost estimator. Is this um, some uh, family form template you created or plug in? Or? No, it's just, it's like you can, if you. I've got the paper version, but the one that's, um, that you'll get, the paper version, the PDF, and the Word version, but then I plugged it into Gravity Form, and so if you get the one that I already programmed with Gravity Forms, you get the JSON file, and you just upload the file, and you're good to go. And how do you get that? You pay $47. <laughs> no, if you signed up at the WordPress Pro, if you, give your, if you sign up to my newsletter today, you'll get the the, the info on the pricing websites, like the whole nine yards of the pricing websites, like a pro, including the paper version, but it does tell you that the automated version is available. So, and the automated version, if you, you can also just tweak if you know how to change things in Gravity Forms, so. But it's a lot easier. I mean, you could build it from, I did, I've had people say they built it from the paper version, but you know, it's, it, all that conditional logic is pain in the neck. <laughs> yeah, forty-seven dollars. <laughs> yeah. I have a I have a different website. Uh huh. Does the price builder would it be appropriate for someone who's a new developer, or is it are the prices the based on if you're really experienced? So which one? What your your price? <laughs> Estimator paper that you oh. have? The question is, is the pricing websites like a pro good for a newbie or, they're, they're, it's based on my prices for regular people, regular businesses. We do a lot of larger, thing, larger comp, like it, it, you throw it all out the window when you have a large team. It, and on there it says, if this is a large team, then you know, this isn't appropriate. Uh, you know they have to because it's it's a whole different ball game. So, but for most of our normal businesses, you know, and for a pretty easy normal business site with a brand story, it ends up being maybe in the six to seven thousand dollar range. And if they want a whole lot more and e-commerce and stuff, it gets up to the ten to fifteen thousand dollar range. And you have some leeway when you're doing it with somebody. If you know that you're going to give them a break, you can gear them to, oh, well, you don't want this or you don't want that. And so you can make it so after you practice it. One of my clients, one of my students calls me one day after, after her course session ended and she said, oh, my God, I just priced a website for $97,000. I'm like, what? I said, how could that happen? That's, I'm like, did I do something wrong? And then I realized there's no way any of that. I said, do you mean 9,700? She said, yeah, 9,700. And um, I said, well, did she know that your tongue was hanging out? Or how did you manage that? She said, no, she didn't see that because she was too busy bargaining me down to 7,500. And this was more than twice what she'd ever built a website for before. And she was a good designer. So, I mean, that's what happens when you get the confidence and you use the tools to take you to the next level. One of the things I learned, if people don't argue at your price, you're too cheap. If they don't bulk at, at the price, and I mean, I, I do nonprofits. I sell church websites, eight and nine, eight and nine thousand dollars. They come in with a budget of two thousand, but by the time I finish the conversation, it's like, you know, but they, when you finish the conversation, they know you are the best church website builder that they're going to find, and they want you. And that's what you have to have. You have to have that confidence with the user experience. We're done with the user experience and stuff and, and, a, and a system so that they will think you were the best person to do their website. And I'm telling you, if you do these things, you will be, if, if they're getting two or three other bids, you will be the best. And you will beat out agencies. Yes. I beat out two Atlanta agencies for $23,000 jobs because
because I knew the the niche better than the agencies did. Yeah, and a lot of people don't want to work with a big agency. We just got one of the biggest Portman Holdings, the biggest one of the biggest real estate development companies in the country, and she found us online. The assistant to the president found us online. They were looking for a local company that wasn't a big agency. She said, you wouldn't believe the bad websites out there. I said, oh, yeah, I would. <laughs> and so, and she wanted us, and she went to bat for us, and we got the job. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you.